when I was about five or six, for the first time I knew how to operate an LP recorder. And the first record that I operated and listened to was by Dr. Balamurli Krishna. It was an RTP in the Ragam Natabhairavi. It went like this. Sarigamapadani padada ganamuto sariyanchada sarigamapadani padada this was my favorite record in my grandfather's collection in Calcutta. Every time I went for summer holidays, the first thing I'll do is take out the tape, uh, that uh, record player, and then this record I would hear. I've heard it so many times. I didn't even know the name of the raga. I just thought that the voice was very beautiful. The way he sang was wonderful. And the Pallavi, there was something unique. Like, I've never heard somebody sing Sarigama Badani as a Pallavi. You know, for me, that itself was so unique. And for a five-year-old, six-year-old, it was so fascinating. My next... Uh, interaction with Balamurli came sometime in the early 80s. My father had gone to UK for a business trip and when he came back, he brought a tape recorder, cassette player. That was the first time we had a cassette player in our house and it was the, this model called Bina Tone. So I had a TDK cassette and as soon as he landed that morning, there was a radio program. So I said, I have to record this program. So I switched on the recording and the 8.30 Arangi say was by Balamurli Krishna. So he started with Kamalam Bajare. And as he sang, usually what we'll all do is you sing Swaram and say, It was so nice to listen to the way he finished that Kamalam Bam every time when he sang the Swaram. And then he sang one beautiful song in Kalyana Vasantam, his own composition, and then finished off with a Tukada. And then uh, within a few days, he I first time I heard him live. That was in uh, Myla Profanards. It was a season concert. And uh, he sang this Natabhair uh, Viragam Tanapallavi. It was a big, uh, I mean, a joyous thing for me because I could identify it from from my listening of that record and all that. And again, I didn't know the name of the ragam. So, but I knew notes because I was learning the violin. So I knew what Rishabham, what Gandharam, what Madhimam. So I had mapped out the scale from the way he sang the ragam. So I wrote Sarigama Padani, this Rishabham, this Gandharam, everything. And I knew, but I didn't know Melagartha numbers. I didn't know all that. Then suddenly somebody from behind, you know, with a deep voice, almost like that Shankarabharam film, Somaya Julu, one mama said, this is raga, Natabhairavi, 20th Melagartha. <laughs> It was very funny the way I heard that voice. And then that's the first time I encountered this name, Natabhairavi, and what it was. Then Tanja Rupendran was playing the Mridanga of that concert. And he started the Taniyavartan. As soon as he started the Taniyavartan, a lot of people got up to leave. I mean, those days it was a it was a it was a habit. A lot of people would take a break, they would go and have a coffee and come back because they thought it like you know, this uh, like how five day test matches had a day of rest or how, you know, films had this 20, films still have this 20 minute interval. They thought the Tanya Avartanam was an interval. Now, Balamurli was, I mean, I'm sure the artists felt, you know, slighted because of that. So he quietly looked around and then he said, many years back, I gave an interval. Again, I will give an interval for 10 minutes. And then they all got up and went out to have a cup of coffee. And everybody also went out. Then after 15 minutes, everybody reassembled and he started with the Tanya Avartanam. As soon as he started with Tanya Avartanam, there was an applause by the audience. It was like almost everybody agreed that it was not a good practice. And I think Balamurli saved the day by making it about everybody. You know, you take a break, we'll take a break, we'll come back and we'll give the respect to that artist who is going to play that Tanya Avartanam as well. It was handled very beautifully. And then what happened when he finished, before finishing the concert, he made a very interesting announcement. This was in 82, okay, the man was hardly 51 or 52 years old. And he says, so many years I have sung in the Sabha, now I am going to retire from performing in festivals. I will only sing one-off events. And he said, this is my last concert in my labor finance. And I announce a donation of 5,000 rupees for the Sabha. And very nicely the whole concert finished. And all that. See, Balamurli Krishna was a phenomenon. There is no second... Uh, question. There is no doubt about his greatness, about his genius. You want to talk about his music, you can only talk, talk about it in superlatives. I mean the voice, the ragam, the compositions, his bhasha jnanam, the and what a superlative performer. On stage, he was like amazing. The way he could hold the audience, the way he could carry the concert through. Several times I have heard it. Then later on, but what happened was for me personally, 
I was involved in so many other great musicians music you know like GNB, Alathur, Sammangudi, Ramnath Krishnan, MD Ramanathan, so many other people that Balamurli was there but never there in the forefront in those days especially the 80s and 90s. So I missed the opportunity to listen to a lot of his live concerts. Something to this day I actually regret. I mean I've heard so many live concerts but somehow or the other it never happened when I wanted it to happen. Then after some, but I used to get in and get out of Balamurli zones. He was there, you know. For instance, whenever I sang Nagumomu, I could not not sing like him. You know, like for instance, he would sing with this score way. Sani dhaba magari sasa ga ma pa ni. Sani dhaba magari sasa ga ma pa ni. Sani dhaba magari sasa ga ma pa ni. Nagumomu. That was a beautiful climax, the way he brought it, you know. And every time I sang Nagumomu, I'd love to sing this, you know, just to... As a as my own you know tribute to the great man like that kind of thing. So I would come into and come out of this Balamurli zone whenever I sang concerts. Sometime in the late 90s and early 2000s, two people really got me interested in several dimensions of his music which I had I had ignored to be frank. One was my violinist Nagai Murlidra. Whenever we travelled in concerts, he would always show. In the part Patrika, in the Varnam Patrika, not alone Varnam and Irkar, the Nijagad Sayadunandane, Creedati Hridayanandane, Nijagad Sayadunandane. So, what are you know, on tour, he would sing this. So, immediately I'll write down the notes, the notation, I've learned the song, then I will sing it in a concert. Like this, I have picked up several, like Yabare uh, Ramaya in Gange Bushini, this the Nate Varnam, Ye Nada Mulo of Dinur Varnam and Irkar. And my several songs I learned from him. The other person who really introduced me into Balamurli was Prince Ramavarma. See, he started calling me for the Swadhitrinath festivals uh, in Trivandrum, and he would always send, give me recordings. Once he sent me a long uh, hard disk containing about 350 compositions of Thyagaraja. And uh, I was listening to them and I came across this song called Sami Ki Sari in Begada. Now this song was very popularly sung by a few other artists and I have heard it in one version. Sami Ki Sari Jepa. Abdi no one version. Then I heard Balamurli and he said, Sami Ki Sari Jepa Jala. Ragam, the song, everything was so beautiful. I wanted to learn that version. But my guru had passed away and I had no way of you know verifying which was the version that to follow. So I called Dr. N. Ramanathan, this scholar in, uh, he was in Madras University, and I called him and I said, Sir, in the Mari Uru, Balamurli Pripadir Kar in an one hour good and a three people trapped in. Then he called back and he said, Sir, in the Balamurli Krishna, or Sat the Lace Padaguda, sir, or Peri a Kinker or ever, our Tiria the Ushime Kade, the Yenna, sir, in the Kirtan on the nineteen forties, love on the publisher, sir, book, and the version Prahara perfecta line to line Padir Kar. Yarume Padla, sir, and Dalmut Karakta Padriga, Sadar Manshal and Dale Dinner. I was so happy to hear that because, see, the man was so conscious of tradition. He was known as an innovator, he was known as a radical, he was known as a maverick. At the same time, very few people understand what a hardcore conservative he was in his musical values. For instance, there is another example. I had gone to a, a wedding in the morning and another Suram artist was playing. Now he was playing a song in uh, song which I have never heard. So I went up to him and said, "Did you hear this? What is this? This is Panchama Raga. What is this? Panchama is not there. What is this? Raga is Panchama. What is this? 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 So I was, you know, it was rankling me. And so I went home and I looked at the books and then I realized Balamurli has sung that song. So it was very unique, it was a new ragam and then I saw, okay, let me check where the source is and all that. So I was looking at some old books. Then sometime later I got, came across a series of books by Tachur Singracharlu, which was published in the 1880s and 90s. And there in one of those books, this song is there and Balamurli has sung it exactly as per the notation laid out in that book. So, I mean, the thing is, the man was so sure of his roots. He was so sure of where the music was handed down from. And he was so sure about where he is taking it to from there. I mean, as musicians, we all have this ideal state. Now you say you want to be conservative, but you want to be modern. How do you do that? Who gives you that perspective? Somebody like Bala Murli Krishna showed how it could be done. For me, it was a huge eye-opener understanding Bala Murli's music, especially during the pandemic. Thanks to so many Mahanu Bhavalus who have uploaded tons and tons of music onto YouTube. 
today it's there is possibility to sit at home and pandemic was the perfect time i heard so much of his music so much of the way he has sung and you realize what a hardcore conservative he was how when he sang a thodi when he sang a shankaravarnam when he sang a bhairavi how he knew what he was singing and if you felt that he was singing something else he also knew that that is why he sang it like that for me the most cherished moment with balamurli was this there was a concert in uh, margali mahotsav so balamurli krishna had never heard my concert maybe once somewhere in a competition he was a judge but that's it he has never come so i had started singing it was this nalai radhavi prabandham theme and uh, one or two songs had finished and there was a huge crowd and all that suddenly balamurli sir walked in so okay i was very excited to see him and very happy also and he came and sat down and the concert went down and i started singing an alapana of simendra madhavan and as uh, you know when you go out to the upper octave and all that there was a crescendo and uh, i mean you 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 reach that crescendo and the audience very spontaneously responded with an applause at that time so uh, as soon as that applause came i acknowledged and just to check out i looked at what balamurli was doing so he quietly he, he heard the applause he just turned around then he looked back and gave a beaming smile on that note see you soon